What's up my pre-calc people? Michael Princhak here, ready to teach you topic 1.6 from AP Pre-Calculus over polynomial end behavior. It's actually a really, really easy topic that a lot of kids first learn about back in Algebra 2, so it's not too difficult, but what is gonna be different than what you did in Algebra 2 is we are gonna talk about limit notation to identify the end behavior for polynomial functions. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. So let's start off by talking about exactly what end behavior represents. So when we're talking about the end behavior of polynomial function, we're looking at the left end and the right end of the function and analyzing exactly what's going on at those ends to our function values. Now, as input values of a non-constant polynomial function increase without bound, which means as x goes towards infinity, the output values will either increase or decrease without bound. And how we represented that back maybe in Algebra 2 was we say, all right, as x goes towards positive infinity without bound, what is happening to our function values f of x? And what we're saying here is that they're either going to go towards infinity or they're going to go towards negative infinity. Those are the only two options. Likewise, as input values of a non-constant polynomial function decrease without bound, the output values will either increase or decrease without bound as well. So again, back in Algebra 2, we represent that by saying as x goes towards negative infinity, that basically is saying as x goes to the left, f of x is either going to go towards infinity or negative infinity, again, without bound. When we talk about the input values increasing without bound, we're talking about what we call right end behavior. So when we acknowledge that, that we're, locking, we're looking at x going towards positive infinity, we're talking about the right end of the function. And when we talk about x going towards negative infinity without bound, we're talking about the left end behavior of the function. So it's pretty simple. The right end behavior is addressing what the function is doing as x goes towards infinity, and the left end behavior is addressing what happens to the function as x goes towards negative infinity. Now the only thing that's really new is how we're going to actually notate the end behavior of these non-constant polynomial functions. We're not going to use the notation that we just went through. We're going to use what's called limit notation. Limit notation looks like this. Here we have LIM representing the limit, and we're talking about the limit of our function as x approaches a. So how this is said is we're looking at the limit of our function as the input values x approach a value a, and the answer is what the output values of the function are doing, and in this case, they're approaching b. So reading this limit notation, we're saying as the input values x approach a value a, the output values of the function f of x approach b. Now, when we're talking about the limit notation for right end behavior, the value that x is approaching is not a specific value a, it is actually positive infinity. So right end behavior is saying, all right, what is the limit of our function as x approaches positive infinity? So it's very similar to that notation we were using earlier, but it's just a slightly different view of it using limits. And then the left end behavior is saying, all right, what is the limit of our function as x goes towards negative infinity. And when we're talking about this, we're saying, all right, as the input values approach negative infinity, this is the left end, the output values of the function approach what? And again, as we mentioned, that's either going to be positive or negative infinity. So let's look at a quick example here. Here we see a graph where both the left and the right ends are going up towards infinity. We could visually see that in the graph. Now using your notation from Algebra 2, you'd say as x approaches infinity, f of x also approaches infinity, and as x approaches negative infinity on the left, f of x also approaches positive infinity. But using our new limit notation, we're saying the limit of our function as x approaches infinity is equal to infinity. And the limit, as, uh, the limit of our function f of x as x approaches negative infinity is also positive infinity. And here we see a second graph where the right end is going up towards infinity and the left end is going down towards negative infinity. So again, old notation for algebra 2, as x goes towards infinity, f of x is also going towards positive infinity. And on the left end, as x goes towards negative infinity, the function is approaching negative infinity. But using limit notation, it would look like this. We're simply saying the limit of our function as x approaches infinity to the right is positive infinity. The right side is going up towards infinity and the limit of our function as x approaches negative infinity to the left is negative infinity. The left side of the function is going down. 
And here is one more example where we see both ends of our function are going down towards negative infinity, and we're just going to jump right to using limits. The limit as x approaches infinity is negative infinity, and the limit as our function to the left as x approaches negative infinity is also negative infinity. Nice and simple when you can see a graph and you can see the ends of the functions. Pretty simple to describe the end behavior. We just got to make sure you're familiar with how to do it with this new limit notation. Now, the next big task is how to determine the end behavior of a function algebraically or analytically where you don't actually have the graph in front of you. Well, if you're working with a polynomial function, it's actually really, really simple. All you have to do is look at the leading term. The leading term is a combination of the leading coefficient and the highest degree of the polynomial, or the highest power of the polynomial, which we call the degree. So if you could identify the degree and the leading coefficient of your polynomial function, it's actually pretty simple to determine exactly what the ends are doing. For example, if you have an even degree polynomial, even degree tells us something very simple. Both ends are doing the same thing. Both ends are going up or both ends are going down. Now, which one is it? Well, that's where you have to look at the leading coefficient. If the leading coefficient of an even degree polynomial is positive, both ends are going up. So the limit to the right and the limit to the left are both positive infinity. And if you have a negative leading coefficient with an even degree function, then both ends are going down. So the limit to the left, negative infinity, and the limit to the right, positive infinity, are both negative infinity. Both ends of the graph are going down. Now, if you have an odd degree polynomial, that means one side is going up and one side is going down. And how do you determine which is which? Well, once again, you got to look at that leading coefficient. If you have a positive leading coefficient with an odd degree, the right side of the function is going up towards infinity. The left side of the function is going down towards negative infinity. If you have an odd degree function with a negative leading coefficient, then the right side towards positive infinity is going down towards negative infinity, and the left side of the function, the left end behavior, is going up towards positive infinity. So it's actually not that hard to figure out. All you got to do is identify your leading term, which is where your degree of the polynomial is going to be, and your leading coefficient. Combining those two things together, it's going to be one of the four different scenarios that will tell you exactly what your end behavior is doing. Let's take a look at a couple examples. In this first function, we identify that the leading term is negative x squared. Therefore, our degree is even, 2 is an even number, and our leading coefficient is negative. That simple information tells me that both ends are going down. And right, once I recognize that both ends are going down, which I actually think drawing a quick picture of the two sides going down is going to actually be helpful when you turn it into the limits. So this means that the limit of the function as x goes towards positive infinity, that's the right end behavior, is negative infinity. And the limit of the function as x approaches negative infinity, that's the left end of the function, is also going towards negative infinity. In this next example, again, the first thing we're going to do is analyze the leading term. Now, notice the leading term is not the first term. It doesn't have to be. It's the term that has the highest power or the degree. And we see that the degree is 5, and the leading coefficient on that x to the fifth is negative 6. So we have an odd degree polynomial with a negative leading coefficient. That means that the right side is going down, and the left side is going up. So we could turn that into our limit notation by saying the limit as x approaches positive infinity, that's the right side of the function, is going down towards negative infinity. And the limit of our function as x approaches negative infinity, the left side of our function, it's going towards positive infinity. So that's how easy it is if you understand the degree and the leading coefficient. All right, that's it for the end behavior of polynomial functions. Again, it's very, very simple. Whether you're looking at a graph or you're looking at the function, it's not that hard to determine the end behavior. But what is new to you is using this new limit notation to identify what those end behaviors are. So make sure you take some time to practice. And in no time flat, you'll be awesome at determining end behavior of polynomial functions. See you in the next video.